Hi everyone, I'm Matt from THKP, and today we're going to be continuing our series on building a Candy Crush clone we're calling Color Collapse from scratch. Before we get into it though, I'm happy to announce Color Collapse is now available on the Google Play Store and will be available soon on the Apple App Store. There's still a lot we're planning to add, but give it a shot and let us know what you think. As always, all of the source code is available at the GitHub repo in the description. By the way, let us know if you're liking our content by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing. It lets us know that you're finding our content valuable and that we should continue to make more. To recap, Color Collapse involves sliding rows and columns of colored boxes around. When a user makes a run of three or more in a row, the whole thing collapses inwards. In this video, we're going to be implementing the core of the collapsing algorithm. Let's get into it. Before we dive into the implementation, I would like to take a brief aside just to look at the diagram about how, how this is going to work. So this black dot represents the gravitational center of the grid. It's always at zero, zero. And these dotted boxes represent a newly disappeared streak of contiguous boxes. And so now what we want to do is kind of collapse this board inward. At a high level, we're basically assuming the position of a block and saying like, okay, can this block step closer to the center given where it is and what its neighbors are? The way this algorithm is gonna work is it's gonna start at the center and then it's going to check the boxes that are nearest to it. Okay, the red and the yellow are equidistant from the center, so it'll check one or the other. And then it may check the a green one. In the case of the green one, the only place it might consider is to move where the yellow one is, but it sees that there's already a square there, so it, it can't move closer to the center. So and so finally, the, our most interesting case, we see the blue, and so it will look in the direction of this newly opened space, and it'll say, yeah, okay, this gets me closer to the center, and there's no, there's no block there. So we will say, okay, we'll update the blue one so that now it moves here. And say, let's say hypothetically, there was another square beyond the blue one, now there would be a new open space where the blue one was that it could quote unquote step into. So that's in broad terms what the approach is gonna be. So let's drop back over to VS Code. So let's get to implementing the gravitize method, which is what, I, what I'm gonna call it. So it's gonna live just after remove contiguous gets called. So Let's call that here. As described in our diagram, we want to start with the boxes that are closest to the center. So we'll create a list of game boxes. Okay, so we just cloned the boxes list just so we're not modifying the real list. So we will say dist sorted boxes. We'll call it sort. And since our center is at zero, we can actually just compare the distance squared of the box locks. So we'll say dot distance squared. So now a dist sorted boxes should be a list of boxes sorted by their distance from zero, zero. So we will iterate over them. So actually it might be uh, useful to take a quick uh, trip back to Figma. So as we're going about this, we need to figure out which direction we want to consider moving in when we're looking at any particular box. Because the only, the only options are kind of north, east, south, or west. Um, but we need to do need to figure out which of those directions are even 
feasible candidates. So, so what we will do is actually, let's see. So we'll add some more, more things to this diagram. Okay, so we've got our arrow, and this arrow represents the distance from the center of the box to the center of the, of the grid, you know, the gravitational center. So this is kind of the true offset between their centers. But the only possible options we can move, obviously, like, if we could move one unit in this direction, that would be, that would be the best, but uh, that's not an option. So, so what we will do is we'll look at the, the things that are valid movements. And so the, the domain of possible movements are, as, as mentioned before, north, east, south, and west. So, so what we're going to do, oh, it's getting kind of crazy. Here are, the, here are the possible directions that we could move in. And obviously only some of them are actually gonna get it any closer to the center. So we'll look at all these directions and we say, okay, A, is this direction going to get us closer to the center? So if it's not gonna get us closer to the center, obviously we're not gonna move in that direction. But B, there's kind of a subtler check, which is more of a judgment call, which is should we move in a direction that is potentially unintuitive. So let's let's even get a little bit more interesting. So let's say we've got a tall stack kind of going out to the side here. I'm gonna delete these. Okay, so we're still considering the blue square relative to the center. Let's update this arrow. So for the blue square, there are two options of moves that we could make that would get us closer to the center, right? So you, we could move where the red is, which obviously there's already a square there, but then we could also move, uh, move here where there's no block. But the question becomes, is that an unintuitive movement? Because even though it is getting the block closer to the center, I think there's an argument to be made that there's almost kind of a physical unrealisticness to this. Since this arrow is so strongly aligned with this direction, it seems like a bit of a stretch to move in this direction to get closer to the center. So that's just food for thought. But to get back to the core of the issues, we essentially need to evaluate all of these directions and say, okay, well, which of these are gonna get us closer to the center? And then of the ones that will get us closer to the center, which are actually feasible because there are no blocks there, if any. And if there are uh, open spaces that get us closer to the center, update the square so that we, we move closer. So, all right, we're moving back to code. So here are our possible directions. These cardinal directions are the angle in radians of the direction. We're using negative pi to pi because those are the directions that offsets generate when you use the direction on an offset. And we're using negative pi and pi because if you have something that's close to negative pi, if you compare it to pi, even though it's technically quite close, it'll look like it's it's far away. So we just want to compare, use, use that value depending on whether or not it's on the positive or the negative side. So we're iterating over the cardinal directions and we need to check the angle between the, or kind of the difference in the angle between the cardinal and the actual angle between the box and the center. And so first what we'll want to do is kind of construct the reverse offset. So the position of the box is essentially an offset from the center to the box. 
but we want to construct the opposite offset which is the box to the center so we'll create an offset called center offset and that will be equal offset And now for every cardinal, we want to calculate the distance between the direction of the cardinal and the direction of the center offset. So we'll say angle delta equals cardinal. Just to get an intuitive understanding about what this means, where if angle delta is less than pi divided by three, it's useful to think of a circle, right, where a zero radians is the angle that's going off to the right. Pi divided by two is pointing straight up. So 45 degrees from the horizontal off to the right is pi divided by four. And so pi divided by three is just a little bit more than that and so essentially what this is saying is, well, if it's closer than pi divided by three to one of the cardinals, consider that as a possible direction to move in. There is always going to be one cardinal that is at least pi divided by three away. And in certain circumstances, there are two cardinals that are both pi divided by three or less away from any direction. And so this means that if the angle that the location of the box makes from the center is close to 45 degrees, it will consider moving to the left or up. But if it's pretty extreme and it is close to being directly to the left, it won't consider moving up or down, even if technically that would get you closer to the center. So that's, that's kind of the intuitive explanation for, for why we're comparing this with pi divided by three. Now that we've constructed our possible moves, we will iterate over the possible moves and see if there's a block there and then move there if not. From direction just accepts a direction and an optional length, the default of which it'll just construct a unit offset in that direction, which is perfect for us since our grid is a uh, unit grid. And now we have a proposed location for our block and we just need a method that will re return the box that's at that location if there is one. So let's create that. Okay, so if get box at lock is equal to null, then there's no box there, and we can set the box's location to that uh, new location. And then we just wanna make sure that we're not trying the other possible move since we already had a successful move. So, gravitize should start to move things towards the center. So let's give this a shot. Okay, so we're calling Gravitize and on pan end. So let's bring our app back. So we will refresh so we get a clean state. All right, let's see. Nice, so that that happened quite, quite quickly. It's kind of hard to tell if that did the right thing. But generally, it seems to, to look reasonable. So I think the next thing that might be actually useful to do 
is introduce this animated container, which will make the boxes animate to their destination. And that might make it slightly easier to see where the boxes are moving from and to, since there's kind of a lot that's, that's going on simultaneously. We're gonna have to leave that for the next video though. Thanks for checking out our series and keep an eye out for future steps in the Color Collapse journey. Thanks for checking out this tutorial and keep an eye out for future videos from THKP. If you found this useful, give us a thumbs up. And if you're interested in seeing more, don't hesitate to subscribe.